Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Desk Studio. I am your man in Japan, Jay Contra, and after a good New Year sales season, I picked up a bunch of games. My budget was about a hundred dollars, and the local sort of like GameStop kind of blockbustery kind of place called Geo here in Japan was having a, a sort of end of year, beginning of year sale where games under $15 were 50% off if you bought more than three. And as you'll see, I bought a lot more than three. So I thought what we could do is we could open up all of these games. We could take a look at their condition, compare their prices to what you might find in America, as well as compare the condition to what you would find in America. So here we've got the first game on the block. We've got Okami Den for the Nintendo DS. The outside looks very good. I think this was a was this a $10 game? It might have been. But let's see the inside. Look at this. The manual. Oh, beautiful manual. Manual's in great shape. No, I mean, no fraying, no anything. And this is what, uh, a 10-year-old game now at this point. And if you want to use this code for Club Nintendo, there you go. It's got all the inserts here. What is this? This is, oh, interesting. I've not seen this before. <laughs> Advertisement for a single, and then, oh, a um, campaign for the release of the game. Put those away. So, inserts in good condition, except for that Club Nintendo, but it's creased, whatever, it's paper, that's what's going to happen. And let's take a quick look. Wow, look at that cartridge. Yeah, that cartridge looks very fine. <laughs> and then, I love it. Then it also has the, uh, the slot for the... <laughs> the Game Boy Advance cartridge. Next up, we've got Kingdom Hearts Recoded, which I'm trying, no, Chain of Memories was the game for the uh, Game Boy, right, or for the Game Boy Advance, and then Recoded, this was the, what was this, this was the cell phone game that I think they ended up re-releasing because it had a lot of important lore elements to it. I've only played the main Final, Final Fantasies, I've only played the main Kingdom Hearts's. Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts is whatever. <laughs> Let's take a look at this cartridge. Wow, like almost like hardly used, like barely used. You can the only problem is the moisture from my fingers. <laughs> when I touch it, the only thing I'm doing is I'm ruining this game by touching it. Great exterior condition. Absolutely fantastic. Again, I think this was normally this was originally $10. I ended up getting it for five. This is the time. I've been trying to say this more often on this channel, but if you want to buy DS, 3DS, and sort of PS3, that generation, this is your time, especially Wii U games. Because I, I really wonder what's going to happen to the Wii U, considering that it's got a very GameCube-like quality to it, where it wasn't super popular. It has a small library of games. So I'm, I'm, in Japan, the GameCube hasn't really had very expensive games. But I think that might change once the nostalgia hits, especially because I thought maybe I was just ahead of my time, but I figured that the N64 would have been, you know, old news by this point. But it seems like the N64 is what is currently in vogue. And while I haven't seen dramatic price increases for N64 games here in Japan, I've heard that they're on fire in the United States. Look at that. Like, you know, can someone leave me a comment and tell me what it's like buying used games at GameStop now? Because I was, you know, not, I haven't bought a used game in America in a very long time. But I remember, what did I buy? I think the last used game I bought was, like, Xenoblade. Oh, yeah, here's the, the crossover between Nobunaga's Ambition and Pokemon. I've really been looking forward to playing this game. I was really glad I could find it. And almost, it's like, you know what? It's like, you know, people will buy these games and it's almost like they don't even use them. Like, okay, you've got some fraying on the corner here. Whatever, who cares? Well, we got, how many manuals? How many manuals do we got? We've got the main manual here. Looks great. Then we've got Pokemon with you for the 3DS. No. Oh, oh, that's cool. Little statues you can buy. How much are these? Oh, you can get, you can get them for 2,800 yen, or I guess you could have uh, 10 years ago. Got the Wi-Fi connection book. We've also got the Club Nintendo card. I love that they keep the Club Nintendo card. I'm glad those stuck around. Or at least they didn't just immediately throw them out. Yeah, wow, look at that. Really want to play this game. 
Oh yeah, what did I, oh yeah, I bought, I was talking about Xenosaga and I completely lost my train of thought. So I bought Xenosaga for the Wii and I remember when I purchased it, I don't think it said it in, I, I think I bought it online and then I picked it up at, a, at the GameStop, right? Like made to, I made to check to make sure that they actually had it in stock. Ooh, what's this card? This card, Dream Drop Distance card. Uh, all right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> And the copy of Xenoblade didn't even have the manual or oh, I remember. Yeah, I think I ended up having to purchase the manual separately. And of course, that was back when Xenoblade was like a $50, $60 game, even though it was like a couple of years old. But I think it either got reprinted or people just stopped caring about the Wii. And now I think you can pick it up for like 30 bucks. Dream Drop Distance. I really, I've only played the main Kingdom Hearts's. So I really want to try out the side stories and I want to try them in their original form because I know basically all of them got re-released in HD collections, but I like to play the original versions of games. That's just the weirdo that I am. <laughs> and it often makes things much more expensive. The real surprise was being able to find Pokemon Moon. Pokemon Sun and Moon were I think going for $15 at for a full price, but I was able to pick this up for 7 or 8 bucks. I guess eight bucks if you include tax. I'm trying to get all of the Pokemon games. Let's open this bad boy up. Oh, yeah. We get this. <laughs> they even kept the promo Snorlax card. That's awesome. I should probably, I'll need to sleeve that guy later. Wow, they already were pumping out the, uh, the yeah. Wow, 2016. The way, way back of 2016. Oh, yep. Oh, so <laughs> we've got digital manuals now. That's crazy. That's wild. And what have we got in here? Oh, I love that. Oh, Snorlax. I love Snorlax. Fantastic. They kept all of the inserts. This is great. This is how you take care of your games, people. Then let's check the condition. Now, remember, this is a game that should have been... I, I mean, would this have been owned by a kid? Not couple of scuffs on the back of here but for a children's game or a game meant for children yeah actually kept in great shape and i have to wonder if maybe some one of the reasons that these games are kept in good shape is because it does affect their resale value you know, got a couple of nicks in the the plastic coating but it's like whatever you know i'm i'm, I'm not that huge of a stickler or the condition of my games just as long as as long as the cartridge isn't too bad and as long as actually the paper as long as whatever is paper is in good shape you know as long as there's not any stains even if it's creased i'm not really you know whatever i know here's some codes uh, if you want to if you're part of the the square enos club go ahead and use the codes i have no problem hold on what's in here what does this unfold out to no, I thought it'd be a cool poster. It's just a lot of information. That's cool. Nothing wrong with that. Even in the wow, even in the 3DS era, still got some cool inserts. No manual, but at least there's some cool printed material. All right, so that's don't we're done with the portables. We're gonna go in. Let's actually, yeah, let's kind of do this by era. So here we go. We've got Shino. Oh, sorry, I thought it was Shinobi. It's Kunoichi, a Sega game. I want to, when did this come out? 2003. So we've got a 16 year old game here. I think this is like $3. I ended up getting it for like a buck 50 just because I wanted to, I was so intrigued by a Sega game that had come out post a Dreamcast with this beautiful art. Wow, oh, hold on. Wait, is this like a comic? Oh, it's a, the Kunoichi briefing file guidebook in the katakana. What do we get in here? More manuals. I love this like sort of mid PS3 era. CG art, very clean lines. We got the manual. Yeah, all right. I'm very much looking forward to playing this. And you know what? It was also three. It was also a buck fifty. So if I don't like it, well, you know, it's not that huge of a loss. And then the other PS2 game that I ended up picking up because not only at Geo you'll find all of the recent systems. You know, Switch. Uh, what am I thinking? Sometimes you'll find Xbox One games. But you'll also find PS1 and PS2 games at certain locations. And I was very lucky that one of them I went to had Parappa the Rappa 2, which I know is not as beloved, perhaps, as the original Parappa the Rappa, but I wanted to give it a shot. Beard Burger. 
Hold on. Let's, well, this is all right. We got a lot of stuff here. And, oh, I haven't been checking. I didn't check the condition of the discs. Look at that. Not too bad. Yeah, you know, for a... Hold on. Is that disc? I hope that's not disc rot. <laughs> you know, I still get comments on my video about disc rot. I'm going to have to maybe take a clean cloth of this just to make sure. Or I might have to play it as soon as possible. Whoa. All right. Here's some interesting stuff. Let's take a look at these inserts. What do we get in here? We've got Parappa Star. We've are these like things you can purchase. There's like a buck fifty. What is this? Oh, they're fig. Let's see, get all ten figures. Wow. Okay, I didn't know there were figures. That's cool. Parappa the Party Mix. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. On sale in October. <laughs> wow. God. Oh, wow. There's actually P desktop accessories for Parappa the Rapper 2. Computer software. Wow, they really... Uh, you know, the first Parappa the Rapper was great, but I didn't realize they were going to merchandise the heck out of it. Whoa, what's this? All right, hold on. Hold on. Do they have this in the, the English release? <laughs> Whoa, it's like a whole poster. Oh, man. All right, I wish I could show this on, on my phone, but... Uh, here, here's a little hint, here's a little preview of something you can find in the Japanese release of Parappa the Rapper. <laughs> Alright, okay, let's put you away. And again, really appreciate that they actually <laughs> held on to this and did not just throw it out. Okay, let's close that, put it to the side. What have we got up next? We're going to the PS3. We've got Biohazard 6. I remember playing 5 and... Not really liking it all that much, but I think Biohazard 6 was like the, the highest selling Capcom game for a long time. And it was also like $1.50 during the sale. So, you know, might as well play like an hour of it and see how I feel. It's got the manual very small. I remember back in the Xbox 360 PS3 days, they still had manuals, which are now long gone. And then, oh, this is gross. Someone's rando hair is in there. <laughs> Oh my god, you saw it here, you saw it here, folks. But the CD or the, the Blu-ray, yeah, looks like it's in good shape. I have no scratches that I can tell. Oh, the box, the box does leave a little bit to be desired. We've got this kind of cut or scratch here, but again, you know, it's not like we're talking about an extremely rare or expensive game. Next up, we've got Metal Gear Solid. Peace Walker, the HD edition, because I really, as you know, I just said a minute ago that I want to play the original of a game, except for PSP games. I'd much rather play the HD remake versions of them simply because I don't want to have to bring out a PSP in order to play this. <laughs> Very slim manual. Yeah, good shape. Let's check the disc. Yeah, all right, not bad. You know, even with these, I mean, this has got to be, how old is this? Wow, this is eight, nine years old now. Came out in 2011. Actually, yeah, for being a 10-year-old disc, yeah, it's in good shape. Great shape. Okay, and then there's an interesting thing here. Oh, okay, so there's got a thing here where, let's see, this might not work online. That's what it's telling me. So when you're buying games, even from, from Gao, they might have a thing on here. Sometimes it says they don't have the manual. Sometimes it'll say it doesn't have a particular insert if it's an important insert. Here it's saying that maybe the online doesn't work. So be, be careful if that's what you're, for some reason, buying Metal Gear Solid in the year 2020. Next up, and we're heading into the PS4, we've got a, I, I don't know, the collector's edition, the launch edition of Bloodborne. This was, I want to say, maybe ten dollars so i picked it up for five because i just really wanted to play bloodborne i i appreciate the souls games although i've never been very good at them and i've heard that bloodborne is you know a bit faster a bit quicker so i was very intrigued and i figured i would give it a shot let's now what's special about this is it comes with yeah we discard that thing there comes with this art book we've got in here oh some very uh yeah, bloodborne looking uh, <laughs> character models. Nice scenes. Let's put that to the side. And so what do we get inside a Japanese copy of Bloodborne? We get 
some kind of codes, PlayStation Plus insert, and then we have the actual DVD or Blu-ray itself. Does anybody call these Blu-rays or do we just, I think we should just call them discs. That probably makes much more sense. Okay, again, great shape. Very glad to have found it, especially at a very cheap price. So I think, the, you know, there is the old Hunter's version that came out. But for one, I don't know if I like Bloodborne that much to where I'm going to want to pay. I think it's still 40 bucks here in Japan. And then next up we've got, for the Wii U, I'm starting to round out my Wii U collection. And here we've got the Famicom Remix 1 Plus 2. I think this is originally a downloadable piece of software, but then it got a full package release. Nice, looks good. Let's see what's in here. We've got <laughs> the thing telling you that the manual is now electronic. And let's look at the disc itself. It's got that great sort of 19, what was it, 80? Was it 86? No, it was 84 in Japan. I'm trying to remember the exact date of the Famicom launch, but all the original games in the first year of the Famicom had this very distinctive, almost 70s looking pattern to them. Every game had this, you know, what would you call this? Almost like heartbeat monitor line in it, just in different colors. See, so looking at the disc, good. Only problem is the literally the moisture from my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> remaining on the disc. Let's put that to the side. Next up, we've got Paper Mario Color Splash. I can't remember why I didn't pick this up when I when I, when I had a Wii U. Or at least, you know, I still have the Wii U or when I first picked up the Wii U itself. I'm done here. Oh, nothing. No inserts, no anything. Not, not, all right, well, you know, hey, we got the game. Cost $5. I'm not going to complain too much about that. Yeah, no visible... No visible scratches on the disc. Great condition disc and great condition box, at the very least. Next up, we've got Hyrule Warriors. Now, I had this digitally. I picked it up so that I could play it immediately upon release. And now I paid $5 just so I could have it physically. Oh, and look at this. What do we got in here? Let's see what we've got. Cool insert with... Does it have, no, no controls or anything. Oh, never mind. Here's the controls. Oh, and you could play it with the Wiimote. All right. Then we've got some Koei Tecmo special stuff. Oh. Oh, hey, it's got a DLC code for all of the, oh, my, I might actually keep that for myself. I don't know if someone might have used this yet, but when I do end up playing this again, I think I would like to have that code if I didn't already show it. <laughs> Okay, hold on, put this in, let's check the disc. Now, one thing I should say is despite what I'll say about how great all of these games have been in terms of condition, something you have to watch out for, and I, I'm saying this specifically for, for Hyrule Warriors because I was able to tell it on some of the copies, other copies of this game that I found, but a lot of these games will sit in the store. They will be destroyed by the fluorescent lights in the store because they will sit in there for years. And that's something that's happening to Japanese games in general. It's something I always try to bring up simply because you have to be very careful when you're buying games. All, you know, if it looks like it's an older game and it's been sitting around for a while... If it looks faded, that's because it probably is. That the fluorescent lights will kill the printing on the outside of the box. Now, what's inside the box will be completely fine. It's perfectly safe. But if that's something you care about, then keep that in mind. If you want a what is, I guess, could be classified as a mint A-grade game, just take a second look at the games you're picking up because they might have been sitting around for, and I'm literally talking years, especially in terms of the sort of the more modern stuff, the Wii U, PS3 stuff, things that people aren't really going for and they won't go for another 10 years. You can tell when a game's been faded because it's been sitting around for too long. And it's a shame because that game, because it's faded, they're not, they oftentimes don't change the price for fading on a game so it's just collectors aren't going to want it so they're going to stick around for a long time and it, it's it's really sad to see that happen to a, to a bunch of these games good insert yeah wow yeah i like this is great I, i'm really 
I don't need a full manual to enjoy the game as long as it's got a cool action guide, as long as it's got something that's printed material inside with great art. I think that's that's more than enough. And so we'll finish off here with Super Mario 3D World, which I really fell in love with whenever I was playing. I think it was Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. I think there were a couple scenes from the game where you were able to play a Super Mario 3D World like level. And I was really impressed by it. So I'm really glad to have picked this up for the Wii U. So in total for, no, was it? Yeah, it was, I think, 95 bucks. It was 9,500 yen. I ended up picking up, let's see, we got Yoshi's Woolly World, Hyrule Warriors, Paper Mario Color Splash, Famicom Remix 1 and 2, Super Mario 3D World, Bravely Second, Pokemon Moon, Dream Drop Distance, Pokemon Nobunaga's Ambition, I forgot what the English title is, Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, Kingdom Hearts Recoded, Okami Den, Bloodborne with the art book, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker HD, Biohazard 6, Parappa the Rappa 2, and Kunoichi. So I think I did pretty well for myself. At the rate I'm playing games now, this is probably going to last me for the next year. <laughs> but I'm still going to be going out looking for some more video games, going into some different places. I hope you enjoyed this pickup video. If you have any questions about buying games in Japan, where to find things in Japan, really anything at all, let me know. Leave me a comment. I'm going to end it here before I keep on rambling. I've been your man in Japan, Jay Contra, saying thanks for watching. See you next time and mahalo.